Hi everyone, it's Michelle. Uh, this is episode two of the podcast. Um, and today is Friday, February 6th. I can hardly believe it's February, but here we are. And um, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram as Cozy Egg. You can also find me on uh, my blog, which you can go to CozyEggDesigns.com and get to either my Cozy Egg blog or the Cozy Style blog. Um, the Cozy Egg blog, of course, is my crafting blog. Um, and now you can also find me on YouTube under Cozy Egg. So um, I will, of course, be posting this episode up to YouTube. I'm in the process of trying to figure out how to get everything um, uh, approved uh, for iTunes. So as soon as I get that figured out, hopefully before the next episode, I will uh, certainly let you know once it's available there. But for now, you can find the episode on uh, both episodes on my blog or on YouTube. So, um, and on that note, I also wanted to thank everyone for watching the first episode and for um, being so sweet in your comments to me and um, being very uh, complimentary. I appreciate it. So I was really nervous to push that button and publish and upload and all that good stuff. So thank you so much for your, um, your feedback and your support. So um, on to the good stuff. And um, I forgot to mention last time that um, the quilt behind me is my Silk Road quilt, which I made some time ago. It's paper pieced kimonos. Um, and I also have an assistant today who is um, attacking my hair. This is Tetmos. Um, hopefully I will be able to get through this recording without too much feline intervention or interruption as it may be. So, um, what's on my finished list? So I have a couple of finishes to show you, which I'm very excited about. And it's one reason why I chose to go ahead and record today, because one of them is a gift that I will likely be giving, um, tomorrow. So, um, this is a tote bag that I made. See if I can get the whole thing in. Um, and the this is for this is a very belated birthday gift for a friend. And the uh, the pattern that I use this is a little Hazel the Hedgehog, and the pattern that I used is this pattern by Elizabeth Hartman, um, Hazel Hedgehog. And this is the first time that I've ever used one of her patterns, but it is very well written, very easy to use. Uh, you can see she gives you uh, photos as well as written out instructions so that you can, you know, whichever way works easier for you if you like to read through instructions or if you'd like to visually see it. Um, this is a very well written pattern. It will probably not be the last of hers that I purchase. Um, I believe this was around $12 um, and it's on very nice heavy cardstock. She's got all of the fabric requirements and everything on the back here. And um, anyway, excellent, excellent pattern. So that's what I used to make the little hedgehog. And um, let me back up a little bit. And the, um, basically I use just some uh, Kona solids for uh, the two grays and the black for the eyes and the nose. And then the spines, I used um, a Tula Pink Acacia uh, print. I think this is called Butterfly Wings, maybe. Um, but uh, my friend that this is for loves pink, so I had to do pink spines. And um, I put one on each side, so there's one on the back too, so she can use either side. And then the 
print that I used for the background, I want to get a close-up of this so that you can see it. This is a uh, Carolyn Friedlander um, Architectures print. Um, I've seen this called just crosshatch. I've seen it called screen print. Um, so I'm not sure what the actual name of this is, uh, but uh, this color is called limestone. And if you can see it, it's a really pale green, um, which I just absolutely loved against the pink. I thought it was, you know, subtle, but it gave that great texture. Um, so I knew I had to use this. And then the inside is this great print. Um, this is Michael Miller's fabrics. Um, and it is, where is my note? This is from the line Grand Bazaar. And I think this is the spade print in a pomegranate. And I, I think I've actually put this in upside down from the way that the the print is you know supposed to go but I loved that it looked like little hearts so that's the reason I chose to put it in this way um, but I just thought you know all of these prints together just formed a really super cute combination and these hedgehogs <laughs> are darling I mean every little bit as I was putting it together they were just adorable absolutely adorable so um, I'm very excited to be able to give this away um, and I did do a flat bottom so it will sit once it's got things in it um, and it's a really good size tote so I hope she likes it I will let you know um, so I'm very excited to have that done. I've been working on that um, the past couple of Saturdays. Um, it really didn't take that long to put it together. And of course, you know, I went through and I started cutting out all of my fabrics for the hedgehog. Please excuse the cat. <laughs> I started putting um, together uh, the hedgehog face and I was just so enamored with it. I thought it was just so super cute that I needed one too. So I cut um, enough fabric for a third hedgehog and decided that I would make a little mini quilt. So sorry. Um, cat antics. I'm hoping that they will go down for a nap here shortly before anything else goes off the table. So, sorry about that. That would be Tutmos. Into everything. So, anyway, mini quilt. Um, so, I made one for me. Um, and on this one, I actually decided to do one spine, a different color, a different fabric. Um, this print is from her, from Tula Pink's Moonshine line. So, um, I just like that little kind of punk punk look with this different colored um, spine there and I use that same Carolyn Friedlander screen print for the background I use the um, the Michael Miller spade print on the back and you can see that I don't have this completely finished I have started um, attaching the binding and I just need to uh, hand stitch that to the other side so um, I'm thrilled with this. I just did some straight line quilting on my machine um, and I love the way it turned out. It's so cute. I can't wait to hang it up. So um, I will get that binding sewn on and then that will be finished as well. Um, so that's it for kind of the sewing related um, finishes. I did have one other finish this week which is a stitching finish. Um, and this is also going to be a gift. Um, this is, oh, and I meant to tell you, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here um, with two cats. Uh, 
The, um, the pattern that I used for the tote is actually um, a pattern by um, Jenny uh, from In Color Order. This is just my printout, but um, I will link to this in the show notes. It's actually her pattern for the line drawstring bag. It's a This is a free tutorial on her website, um, and I have actually used it to make a drawstring bag, which I will show you sometime um, out of some Christmas fabrics. But really what I wanted to do is, obviously since I was doing a lined tote, the piece that I paid most attention to is one, she has this great layout of how you um, lay out your fabrics with your exterior fabrics and then your interior fabric. Um, of course, I just ignored this, uh, this little extra focus fabric um, that she's got there. But this is basically the way I sewed it together. I just used my own uh, measurements so that I could um, so that I could fit the the hedgehog in there. And then um, the other piece that uh, that was important was in order to get that flat bottom, I wanted to use um, the same technique that she uses in that drawstring bag um, to make those flat corners for the bottom. So, this is a great tutorial, very easy to follow, and again, with written instructions as well as with pictures, um, it's free and well worth um, keeping it. Obviously, you can see I've printed this out and I keep this with my other tutorials that I refer back to a lot. So, that's what I used for the tote bag. So, okay, back to, <laughs> I'm a little all over the place, probably because I have cats kind of um, all up in my business here. <laughs> so, um, the other finish that I wanted to show you is a stitching finish and it is this little, um, ornament. This was actually from the Just Cross Stitch ornament issue, um, from this past, uh, December for, for, so it's the JCS ornament issue for 2014. And this is a little ornament, um, called uh, Faith, and it's by Nikki's Creations. And um, I stitched this on, I think she calls for like a 28 count fabric or something. I believe that this is 32 count. Um, and I believe that it is also uh, vintage pearl barley by um, Lakeside Linens. I will double check that, but um, Anyway, I just loved this when I saw it, and um, part of the reason that I wanted to stitch this is because uh, one of my New Year's resolutions this year is to um, read the Bible, actually. And so I'm using an app called She Reads Truth, um, and so I've got it installed on my iPad, and so it has, uh, it basically breaks up the Bible into daily um, reading assignments. So I've been going through that in everyday reading. Um, and it's really, what's nice about it is with the other women that you're going through the readings with, you know, there's a, a comment area. And so you can read what others have written. Um, it's nice to have that feedback. And it's basically a, a virtual Bible study. Um, which I'm really enjoying. So I've been doing that um, and I will link to that as well. Uh, but so uh, I have a friend that's also doing it and when I saw this little ornament, I just thought, you know what? Rather than waiting till December and forget that I wanted to stitch it, I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch it now. And um, this, I've stitched this one for her. I'm probably going to give this to her um, maybe next weekend uh, just as a little Valentine's Day gift. Um, and then I'm going to stitch one for myself as well. And I think I'm going to make this into, instead of doing it as an ornament, I think I'm going to make it into uh, like a pin cushion, you know, filled with walnut, crushed walnut shells. I think that's what I'm going to do with it or, you know, just a little... Uh, you know, small to put in a dough bowl or something. So 
anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and the, the pattern actually calls for DMC and I sat down and I started trying to pull the DMC for this and found that there were several of them that amazingly I did not have. So what I did is I basically took the photo um, from the or from the ornament issue and then I just picked um, gentle art threads that looked, you know, that I was happy with. Uh, so I did change some of the colors. Um, I made this much more blue. I gave this one red hair and of course this one has brown hair. Um, here's a little closer up. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Um, so I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Oh my gosh, can you see somebody getting into big trouble there? Um, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out and so um, I'm anxious to get it stitched up into a little and finished into a little pillow. So you probably won't see this one again, but when I stitch mine, I'll be sure to show it to you and how it turns out. So that's my other finish for this week. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show is uh, I decided it's cold here. It had actually been up into the 70s and it's supposed to get up to like 80 within the next few days. But yesterday it was like 30 degrees, which I know for most people you're laughing at me that that's cold. But um, for here in Texas, it's cold. And so um, I was very chilly yesterday. I'm, I'm going out later this afternoon and so... Uh, I decided I needed to bundle up a little bit. So this is an infinity scarf that I made. Um, this is from uh, uh, Anna Maria Horner's uh, infinity scarf pattern. And uh, one side is velveteen. This is actually from her, um, oh, I can't think of it now. Innocent Crush line. Um, so it's nice. It has that soft, soft velveteen texture to it. And then this side is actually from Field Study. And this, um, this is wall. So, um, it's got a nice weight to it and, um, I've got it doubled, but another free pattern, uh, that Anna Maria has on her blog. Uh, several other people have, you know, done some variations on a theme. Uh, of that same tutorial and um, actually went to uh, Kelby Sews uh, on Instagram. She has a tutorial on her blog, which I will also link to. And she changes the uh, the amount of fabric that you use and the cut cutting sizes so that you can actually get two infinity scarves out of um, two yards of fabric. So uh, you just need a half yard of um, wall for each scarf and a half yard of the Innocent Crush, or not Innocent Crush, the Velveteen for each, um, for each scarf. And so uh, it gives you a little more bang for your buck. Whereas I think Anna Maria's, um, the width that she's using is, you would have to, you know, buy a lot more fabric in order to use that. And it just really doesn't need to be that wide, you know, because then it's, crazy. So anyway, um, that was the other thing I wanted to show you kind of finishes wise. I actually made this, um, the Christmas before last and I made two of them, one for myself and one for a friend. Um, and it was funny. This was the, uh, this was her Christmas present, um, that year. And when I gave it to her, she in turn gave me, uh, an infinity scarf, uh, that she had made one for each of us out of a uh, tulip pink uh, voile from her Prince Charming line. And so, you know, it was just funny that it was like, hey, I made you an infinity scarf. Hey, I made you an infinity scarf too. So, um, anyway. Uh, okay, so, uh, whips. So, um, I'll start with... Um, knitting. There's not a whole lot going on on the knitting front. I am still working on my um, on my garter stitch scarf cowl thing. Um, I'm getting pretty close to the end so I'm excited to 
get that off the needles and then start looking for um, my next pattern that I'm gonna do. Um, I think I found one and I'm really excited about it. So um, as soon as I get that, get the yarn for that and get that started, I'll let you know. But um, the one thing I did wanna show you, um, which is sort of more stash enhancement than whips, um, I did go through uh, my stash of yarn because yes, I'm not really a knitter, but I have a yarn stash. Um, and I have these um, sugar and cream. Um, I believe this is cotton, um, you know, which is really kind of what you want to use for, yeah, they're cotton, uh, which is what you want to use for dishcloths. And so I thought dishcloths would be a great way for me um, to practice a little bit and, you know, practice on, um, uh, casting on and binding off and all that sort of thing. So uh, I got these out. I thought they were just kind of bright fun colors and then I've got one more that's in a yellow and white that I'm really loving. So um, I've got those and so I think once I finish my cowl scarf thing I will practice on some dishcloths and then um, then go on to my next project. So, exciting. Um, and uh, the, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is, um, I was actually gonna show you and they send, but I forgot to bring it in here. But I have been working on that quite a bit more and um, I've gotten pretty far along on that little section that I was working on and I'm to the point that I'm starting to put um, to stitch the grass in on that section. So um, I brought it to my uh, Tudor Rose Sampler Guild. We had our, our February meeting on Tuesday night and um, the program was our MAGIC Revealed. And so MAGIC stands for my annual good intentions contract. And so at the beginning of last year, we wrote down um, what we wanted to accomplish in 2014. And I had three things on my list. So um, the first thing I had was, and they send, obviously. Um, the second one was my anniversaries of the heart. And then the third thing was um, snooty parrots, which was the 2014 Sal on Facebook that I mentioned last time. I did not get any of those three things done. So, um, uh, obviously, I'm very close on Anne Lee Sin, uh, but I, I'm a little disappointed with myself that I did not get any of those three pieces that I wanted to get done, done. Um, so, uh, I put them, well, I put Anne Lee Sin on my list for 2015, obviously. So, um, it's an interesting, and I've talked about this on my blog, it's an interesting thing that it seems like when I set myself a goal of here's what I'm going to accomplish this year, um, basically what I'm doing is making a list of things I'm not going to work on at all. So um, I'm hoping that in 2015 I can change that and um, actually start uh, getting some things finished that I've had sitting in my closet, you know, untouched or some things have been touched. Um, but there, I just have so many works in progress that it's, and I think I talked about this last time, that it's kind of weighing on me. So I'm ready to get some things finished. And, and they send is obviously first on that list. Um, the other thing that I put on the list is um, uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow, which obviously is uh, the Facebook stitch along for 2015. And I have actually been working on this a little bit. I showed you my little bitty progress last time. Um, I have made a little more progress, not a ton, but it's been fun getting that peacock stitched in there. I worked on this a little bit last night and then a little bit uh, I took when I took it to Guild, I worked on it there as well. So that's been fun to work on. I, I'm loving the 48 count fabric, um, very much loving it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is 
uh, on my 5260 fabric that I'm using for snooty parrots. Um, I do find that I don't have any problem using my normal needle. Um, and this, I don't, the 48 count also, same thing, normal needle, no problem. But I find that when I park my needle in my fabric, it does seem to distort the holes in the fabric a little bit. And so um, I've been doing this on snooty parrots as well, but on this one, uh, I decided last night I really needed to get out a, uh, a needle minder and put on here so that I could have my um, my needle sitting on that. Actually, it's on the back side, but I'll put it there so you can kind of see how that works. So it's magnetic. Um, one magnet goes on the back side of your fabric, which you can see here. And then the front side also has a magnet on the back of it that goes on the front of your fabric. and you can just attach your needle to it rather than um, sticking it through your fabric and leaving it parked there overnight or whatever. Um, probably in the long run it's not a big deal and as I stitch those holes will, um, will go back into shape but you know as long as it takes me to work on something and this is a very big piece I just didn't want to risk it so I got my needle minder out. This is actually a needle minder that I won um, in the Snooty Parrots group, uh, each month they did a, a birthday giveaway. And so I won uh, in August when my birthday is, and uh, this needle minder was actually one of the things that I won. It's got little rhinestones on it. You can see, so sparkly. Um, but anyway, so I got my needle minder out. So that's what I've been working on. Um, stitching wise and they send and then um, Sparrow so I'm happy with both of those things um, and getting Sparrow out has been a nice change from working on and they send and then obviously I had the little faith pin cushion that I've been working on too that's been a nice little travel project so um, so the only other uh, thing I wanted to talk about I really don't have any other um, whips to show you but I have a couple of things that are on deck so to speak and over on Instagram there is uh, there's a hashtag which is um, so my stash 2015 and um, the person that started it and I'll put a link to it um, she mentioned uh, one night on Instagram that you know she has all this fabulous fabric that she's been hoarding and she never seems to get to the point where she actually, you know, cuts into it and starts making, you know, all these things that she's had on her list of things to make. And, you know, it really kind of struck a chord with me that not only do I really want to work to um, reduce my amount of whips over 2015 and really start to um, get some of those things finished, um, the other thing that it, you know, that really struck me is that I have, I do have a, a good amount of fabric. Specifically, I have a good amount of Tula Pink fabric that is sitting in my stash that is um, slated for specific quilts. And what I'm noticing is that some of them, I don't have all of the fabric that I need. And as she you know, as she produces more lines and we get farther away from some of the older lines, they get harder and harder to find. And so, you know, some fabric that at the time that I bought it, I was paying, you know, my normal $12 or so a yard. It's now going for $100 a yard. Or, you know, some of like the nightshade cameos are going for, or not cameos, um, but the Coven fabric, um, are going for $20 per, you know, per portrait. In one, it's crazy, but, you know, supply and demand. Um, so what I want to do is I want to start working on some of these tulip pink quilts that I have sitting that are ready or almost ready to go. Um, 
because I'd like to be able to say, okay, what fabrics do I need? Let me get these additional fabrics and let me just get started on it because what's stopping you, you know, except me. And I'd really rather have a whole bunch of finished fabrics with this gorgeous tulip pink fabric that I love than a big stack of tulip pink fabric in my closet. So, um, that's one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to start pulling out some of these, uh, quilts and fabrics that I want to work on and just start doing it. You know, that's kind of been my motto this year so far is just do it. Just start, you know, what are you waiting for? So, um, and, and it's funny, I've been watching some, uh, yarn raising podcasts with um, Malia and uh, of course I'm way behind but she was doing a uh, you know what are you waiting for Cal so um, it's kind of the same thing is you know what am I waiting for why am I just sitting around with this stuff you know just sitting um, and the other thing that I'm finding which is you know really kind of spurring me on to get started on these is I tend to borrow from these tulip pink fabrics or the fabrics that I have slated for specific quilts or specific projects. And I'm concerned that unknowingly I'm going to, you know, get into the amount of fabric that I need for my quilt and then not have what I need um, because I've used it for, you know, making a mini quilt or whatever or a, a pillowcase for my niece, which, you know, with what that nightshade fabric is going for now, it's like a hundred dollar pillowcase. So anyway, <laughs> um, so um, the things that I'm looking at, the two pieces that I um, am really excited about at the moment are, um, the first one is this Anchors Away quilt. And um, I just adore this. I just think it is so stunning. And I actually got the chance to see this in person. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and this is done in Tula Pink saltwater line. And um, so I thought, you know what? Let me just see. What I've got, if I've got all the fabrics that I need, and if not, I'm going to start trying to um, trying to get them. So I have most of what I need. Um, I don't have the two solids, but I'm not concerned about those. It's all of these blue um, saltwater fabrics that I'm concerned about. And um, so I've been going through my stash to see what I have and there are two fabrics for this that I do not have and one of them, this is hard to see, but this is the um, submarines and seaweed uh, fabric and this is in the seaweed colorway and then also in the uh, aqua colorway. Those are the two that I don't have and this one, proving impossible to find. Um, it's one of those fabrics that's going for a lot, a lot, if you can even find it. And this is the fabric that I had actually intended to use as my backing fabric for um, my Hex on the Beach kit whenever I get that finished. And I'd never bought it. And now I can't find it and I need like four yards of it for the backing. Um, obviously, I only need a third of the yard for this, um, this pattern. So I'm hoping that I can scrounge up enough of that to make this. Um, this I can still find, so I think I'm okay there. Um, but then, you know, the other thing is, look how much backing fabric this calls for, eight and a half yards. How am I gonna find eight and a half yards of saltwater fabric when nobody can find it, you know, anymore? So anyway. It's causing me a little bit of panic, um, but this is a free pattern um, by Tula Pink. It's on her website. Uh, you can download it. It's uh, all of her patterns, actually, I think from the saltwater line, uh, she did as free PDFs, which is really cool. So anyway, um, 
that's the first thing that I'm started, starting to kind of work on. Um, and so I just wanted to show you some of the fabrics because they are stunning. And I've actually started cutting some of my two inch squares for the kit. I think it calls for like 600 or something two inch squares. And this is one of my favorite fabrics from the line is the octopus garden. It's just fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So, um, and then here's the, uh, I think this is called sea debris, which is fun. And um, yay, I got the end of the bolt. <laughs> so, um, I had actually bought most of these for um, my schnitzel and boo mini quilt swap that I did um, last summer. And um, there's the sea stripe. Isn't that fabulous? So I had some of these already in my stash for that. And this, this is another really popular one. Very hard to find. Um, this is the bubble shells pattern. Very hard to find. And then um, this is uh, called tortoise shell. And you can see it's these fabulous little hexagons. Um, but when you get further away, it makes this really neat diamond pattern. Um, this fabric in coral is actually what I'm going to use for my binding fabric for Hex on the Beach. Anchors and then um, seahorses. So anyway, that is the saltwater fabric. And I'm just going to start cutting for... Um, for the anchors away quilt because I really want to make it uh, and I'm I know I need some those two additional fabrics and I want to make sure that what I have of these other fabrics is enough and um, I want to do it before it's gone so that's the first one that's on deck uh, the next one this is also a free um, pattern called the five yard quilt and when I went to uh, the Dallas quilt market or quilt show year before last there was a booth there um, called material girls I think that had a, uh, a quilt made up as well as they had a quilt kit that you could buy that used this five yard quilt pattern and then some tulip pink fabrics and it was absolutely fabulous loved it and so um, I didn't get the kit, but I was so in love with how it looked that I decided to just recreate it myself. So, um, and I amazingly found all of these fabrics on sale, uh, which of course are very hard to find now. So, and this is all from her birds and the bees line. So, um, there's this fabric, this fabulous chevron, um, and the main fabric, uh, the main focus fabric, is the squirrel fabric. So, um, I'm very excited about that. It's going to be cute. Little squirrels. Um, and then this little bits that has the birds in it. And then uh, this solid, uh, which I think is lime, maybe? Citron, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look, but um, it uses this for uh, the solid for the um, the sashing around the blocks, and so you've got your your squirrels in these focus blocks. Um, but then the fabric that they use, which I thought was so interesting, that goes perfectly with it, and I didn't grab it um, to show you. It's the, um, it's from Denise Schmidt, uh, from her Chicopee line, and it's one of those great plaids that has that bright green in it, um, and they use that for the binding and for the backing, so I've got that um, to do this quilt with. So, I'm really excited to make this, and 
I'm really excited that, um, that I have everything I need for it. So what am I waiting for? So I'm just gonna cut it and go. Um, and so those are the two that I picked to focus on. It's kind of funny that they're um, both kind of in that blue range. Um, I actually have uh, another quilt that I'm going to do in her Birds and the Bees fabrics, but with the, uh, the opposite color range, the warm pinks and oranges. Um, so I'm excited about that. So I'll have two quilts out of the same line, um, but one's going to be warm and one's going to be cool. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. But you just got to start, right? So anyway, um, I think that's all that I wanted to share with you today. I apologize for all of the rambunctiousness with moving the camera around and dishes falling and uh, cats playing with my hair and the whole shebang. Um, but I knew if I didn't get this recorded today, um, some of the gifts that I have, I wouldn't be able to show you. And um, so I hope you can be understanding and forgiving of that. Uh, you know, I've been watching a lot of podcasts and I know that there's a lot of people that, you know, have huge pet peeves about don't drink on camera, don't cough on camera, don't wrestle, you know, uh, packages on camera, don't move the camera, don't, you know, don't, 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 don't. And frankly, I, I just kind of feel like if you're going to be that picky about stuff, maybe just don't watch podcasts. So um, anyway, <laughs> sorry, that's kind of a hot button for me. Um, but uh, I hope that uh, you can forgive my, uh, the cat, caddis interrupt us here. Um, and, uh, I hope you enjoy this episode. I'm excited to be, uh, doing this and I'm looking forward to getting, uh, getting this up on iTunes as well so that uh, people can subscribe. I've had a couple of people subscribe already to, um, the, the, uh, podcast on YouTube, which I'm very thankful for. So thanks everybody. I appreciate it. Um, and the one thing I wanted to leave you with obviously is, um, what I'm grateful for. So today I'm grateful for time to sew. So, um, with that, I will leave you again. You can find me, um, as cozy egg on Instagram or Twitter. You can find me at cozy egg for my blog and um, this will be posted to my blog and to YouTube so please take a look um, please be uh, patient with me and um, hopefully I haven't uh, broken all of the uh, all of the horrendous um, no-nos that you're you know that bug people with podcasts so anyway thanks a lot and uh, we'll chat next time <laughs>